I am David Jones, Chief of Staff for the Cobb County Sheriff's Office. I'm from Columbus, Georgia, about an hour and a half from Atlanta. My mother, she's a retired educator. She was an elementary school principal. Uh, my dad is retired military. Uh, he also retired from a manufacturing uh, a tire plant uh, where he was a safety coordinator. And growing up, uh, it was instilled to me in me to um, always give back. I always saw my parents involved in the community. Um, they were always helping others. Uh, they were involved in the church. Um, and then, you know, my mom would, you know, she would give the shirt off her back. Uh, when she was in school and she was a principal, um, she treated, you know, all kids as if they were her own. And um, I saw that growing up. And so, you know, that kind of follows me today. Um, in college, I was part of Big Brothers Big Sisters. I had a mentee. Uh, and then once I graduated, I joined a fraternity and I became a mentor and advisor for uh, young men going through college. I wish I had someone like that, you know, for me when I was going through college. You know, having that mentor or somebody that was supporting me uh, was important. And so that's what I try to do uh, with young men who are in college today. Youth empowerment is important to me, I think because I saw my mother uh, empowering youth. And then when I see, you know, young men and women um, in their, in their walk of life and I think that there's something greater for them I want them to be able to achieve that you know where you are right now is not the end there's always something greater that you should be striving for and so helping them find their full potential um, that's what that's all that I hope uh, for them to do and I can take the experiences that I have and impart that in them making sure that they you know get the scholarships that they um, you know, need to have to graduate, um, the experiences that they need to have in order to get through school, whether it's internships, uh, whether it's resume writing, whether it's job readiness, you know, I just want them to have a good experience um, no matter where they are and then be able to use that to further their career, to further their life. My mom, uh, as a principal, she has a very big heart. And when kids, you know, when she saw that there was a need, uh, whether it was a parent who had an issue and a kid was, you know, in need, um, she would step in. And even though it may not have been the preferred thing to do, um, if they needed a place to stay, my mom would step in and she would bring them home. And they would treat the kid just like, they were their own. Whatever I got, the kid got. And so, uh, you know, I developed relationships with, um, you know, other kids within the school, you know, that same way because, again, that's just the way, um, you know, I was raised and, you know, we were always there to help those who were in need. Well, I worked uh, for 22 years for a consulting firm. And, you know, I appreciate the experience and even the education that I gained um, through those 22 years. But I always knew that it was something else, you know, that was my calling. You know, service was kind of what I was always drawn to. And, you know, I never desired to work in law enforcement. But when the opportunity came, I just saw this as... Uh, you know, this is my opportunity to give back, an opportunity to, offer, you know, an opportunity of service. And so now, you know, I provide, you know, service to men and women in law enforcement and, you know, be a part of uh, a broader community. And, and I like that. I enjoy the impact that I'm able to make um, at work and in the community. I think, you know, bridging that gap between the community and law enforcement is so important. Um, I think I have a unique position as a civilian to be able to do that. And that's, that's what I really strive to do. There's a scripture that I, you know, can really draw from. And it's Romans 8.28. It says, all things work together for the good of those that love God and are calling according to his purpose. 
And so when I think about my journey, my life, I think about all of the experiences that I had. When I graduated college, a week after I graduated, I got really put in an un, uh, unfavorable situation. Uh, I was arrested. Went out one night, I was arrested for attempted murder. In that situation, you know, I, I couldn't speak. You know, the uh, accuser said that the person had on an orange shirt. It was kind of what people would say being at the wrong place at the wrong time, but I don't believe that because uh, when I fast forward today and I look at the position that I'm in now, I said it was all for a reason. But in that situation, I got arrested. Uh, I was put in jail for a couple of days. And if it had not have been for my parents, who were able to afford a lawyer to get me out of that situation, um, I don't know where I would be today. And so I remember going to court. The bailiff looked at me when I walked in the courtroom and just told me I should be ashamed of myself. And that just kind of stuck with me because he didn't even know my situation. He just said, you should be ashamed of yourself. And the judge who was over that case didn't even look at me did not even look at my face and if it had not been for my mother who was there who the judge kind of draw to because she was in education and she was apologizing because my mom had to leave school and you know come to Atlanta to look at my situation you know I just I just I felt some kind of way and it it still kind of sticks with me today because you know, we have several programs in our facility and I want to support the inmates. I want to support the detainees, but I even have trouble, you know, going down really to support them because of situation that I went through. And one of the things that I really draw close to um, is the men and the women that work here at Cobb County Sheriff's Office. I see the level of care that they have for you know, not only their uh, employees, but also for their, you know, the inmates and the detainees that we support every day. Um, the dignity and the respect that goes along with it that I felt like I didn't have when I was in that situation, you know, as a chief of staff, I support them because I want to make sure that they always show that level of dignity and respect, no matter if they're innocent or guilty, we owe that to them. That's our job. I was initiated into the Omega Sci-Fi fraternity on December the 10th, 2004. And since that time, I served as an undergraduate advisor. I served as the bossless, which is the president. I served as the vice president. I've had several roles. Um, I was always involved in the community and that's what kind of drew me to uh, wanting to serve in that capacity. Uh, but now uh, I was elected as the Georgia State Representative uh, where I'm over 43 chapters, undergraduate and graduate. Georgia is the largest concentrated group of members uh, within our fraternity uh, worldwide. Georgia has the most. And so I take that role very seriously. Uh, and everything that I do, um, it goes back to um, service and, you know, what I, what I provide. So my dad is an Omega as well. Uh, he was initiated in 1983 through Lambda Iota chapter as well. So I followed in my dad's footsteps in joining that same chapter. And so it's a beauty and, and I enjoy having my dad with me as we travel to conventions, as we go to meetings together. That's just another thing that we share um, as a father and son. You know, he knows me better than probably anybody else, but uh, him being able to see me grow within the fraternity and take on different roles and then, you know, different roles in my career, I think uh, he's proud of that. And so I like to take him with me along the journey. And, uh, at meetings, sometimes I have him serve as my chief of staff to kind of help me navigate the things I need to do when I'm, when I'm at meetings. There's a saying in Omega that there's no place for mediocrity. And so everything that I do, 
I try to put my best foot forward. I try to do the best that I can. And so, you know, everything, it may be minor. I want it to be to perfection. I understand there's no thing, such thing as perfect, but I still try to do the best that I can and make it perfect in my eyes. Black history to me is really looking at all of the achievements um, and the experiences that African Amer Americans have gone through uh, to get us to this point in society. Um, when I think about my family, uh, when I think about you know the leaders that we that we all know and we all you know give praise to you know we would not be i would not be where i am today if it were not for those leaders uh including my parents so you know i have a great deal of respect for those who travel you know the road before me uh there's a poem that i often quote it's called bridge builder and that's what i hope to be uh for young people today as well as those who come behind me as a bridge builder. And, um, you know, I enjoy my job. I enjoy um, my life. I enjoy what I do from a community standpoint. And uh, it gives me it, it, it gives me that fulfillment. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm I'm in my calling. I'm in my purpose.